Hey guys, Rob here at 3D Printscape. So today's video, I'm gonna be giving you my initial thoughts on this fixed dry, uh, dry box. It's a dual spool or one large spool uh, dryer box um, that can be used to dry out pretty much any type of filaments. It has a built-in heater and air circulation so it gets the humidity out. Um, I'm gonna do another video after this one, uh, kind of testing to see what type of difference it actually makes. I mean, as you guys know, uh, the filament absorbs moisture. You get too much moisture in it, you can start to see bubbling and stuff in the print. So for the next video, I'm gonna leave one of these spools outside for a couple days, uh, let it get some moisture, uh, do a quick test print with it, see what it looks like, and then run it through the recommended settings on the instruction manual through the dry box and uh, see what that ends up looking like to see how big of a difference it actually makes. It's also worth noting that this box can be used as a uh, dry box, not just a filament dryer. Um, I would recommend that once you get it to temperature, you kind of put something over the top holes here, which is for ventilation, and maybe throw some silica gel in there. Um, and you can print out of it just like it was a dryer box. Um, or you could just run the heater every now and then uh, to remove some of the moisture in there. Uh, your call. Just make sure if you go with the style where you kind of seal everything off, um, that when you go to actually run the dryer again, uh, that you remove it because you need that open for some of the air circulation to get the moisture out. So in this video, I'm going to kind of cover the unboxing of this, go over the setup, which is really easy, and then give you my initial thoughts. And then, like I said, I'll do uh, the test on the next video. Uh, so if you have any questions about what I'm covering here or would like to see any other videos, uh, go ahead and leave a comment below or join us on Discord. And if you haven't already, uh, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. Thanks. All right, guys. First off, I want to apologize for any background construction noise you might hear. Uh, they're building a house across the street and being a little bit louder than normal. Uh, but here I've got the fixed dry NT1. It is a dual spool or a large spool uh, filament dryer. For full disclosure here, they did send this to me to try out and provide feedback on. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna do. I've actually been looking for one of these for a while. Uh, so it works out pretty good. Um, but I will give you my honest feedback and not kind of let the fact that they provided this to me sway any of my opinions. So let's go ahead and open the box up, take a look to see what's inside. We have our cover. The base itself. And it looks like some Bowden tube here and the instructions. So we'll go ahead and take a look at all of that and test this out. So as you saw, when I opened everything up, there wasn't really much in the box. Uh, everything is already pretty much put together. Uh, just from moving things around, it does feel like this is all built really well. Uh, the rollers and everything roll smooth. There's bearings. Uh, it's got a nice screen in the front and it feels like it's built well. Same with this cover. And I can't say the same for all of the uh, dry boxes or dryer boxes that I've used. Uh, some of them just feel cheap. So um, I definitely did not get that feeling with this. So let's go and take a look at the instruction manual. The instruction manual really doesn't have much to go over uh, because it is pretty straightforward. There's only four buttons here. Uh, the main thing that I would recommend either keeping this around or keeping it somewhere for are these temperatures. So this tells you based on the filament type, what temperature and for how long you want to dry it for. Uh, that will just give you a good starting point. One thing I did want to note, if you're mixing multiple filament types in here, which probably isn't the best to begin with, uh, but I assume I will be at some point, my plan is to go with the recommendation for the smaller or whatever is the a lesser temperature and maybe cook it a little bit longer. Uh, I think that won't really impact things, um, but heating it up higher than it should be, I can see having negative consequences. All right, so let's go ahead and kind of put this all together and throw some filament in here. So there is a heat shroud. Uh, this just sits right here. And then we'll go ahead and put, I got two rolls of filament. I'm gonna just throw in here to test. I've had them out for a while. I'm just gonna put the filament in so that I can feed it through the front if I want it to. So this is gonna go just right here. You see here that it rolls nicely, smoothly. And 
and then the same with this one. Now, if you are using a larger uh, three kilogram roll, you're gonna just put it over the two sets of rollers. So in that case, you're only gonna be able to use one roll, um, but I'm very rarely using any of those. I mostly use these one kilograms. So this goes on top here like that. It is a tight fit, it gives a nice seal. Uh, so you might have to play with it to get it in place a little bit. Um, I like the fact that they have the outputs pretty much all over. So you get three at the top and two on the front and same on the back here, three at the top and two in the back so that you can use this um, as a dry box as well. So that once you have everything cooked, you can just continue to uh, feed the filament out of there and print from it. They do give you a small piece of Bowden tube. It will just go into one of those and then you'll feed it through. Um, one of my printers has a dry box on it. So when I'm using that one, I'll probably just dry with this and just stick it in that dry box and let the silica gel just do its job. Uh, but the rest of my printers don't have any type of dry box. So I probably will be using this and letting the filament feed from it. All right, so now that it's plugged in, I'm gonna power it on. Gives you the current humidity reading which right now is at 47, 46% in this room and the temperature in there. And then really you only have a couple controls from here. You've got your menu that allow you to change the temperature and the time. Uh, so how long it's gonna actually heat up for and then your up and down arrows. So because this is PLA, I'm gonna go ahead and set it for uh, 50 degrees and it says for four hours or more. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and set that. So let's go into the menu. So we'll set it to 50 and then bring this down to four and you go ahead and put that at zero too. And now it's going to heat up and we'll be able to see the humidity uh, change as it's going. And in general for PLA, they say that between 30 and 50 is fine. Um, but I know this filament has been sitting out for a while. Uh, so I will go through the whole drying process with it before using it. Um, but overall, uh, I like the fact that it is simple to use and it seems well built. Uh, you can feel air coming out of the top here where there's a couple holes uh, for air flow for the circulation. Uh, so any humidity in there is going to come out through there. And um, it's no louder than a 3D printer with a silent board, like one of the fans on those. So I'm not sure I would have it next to me like if I was working right here, uh, but it's not something that I would discount either. I mean, it's pretty quiet overall, um, but I haven't heard uh, too many of the actual active dryer boxes. Uh, so I don't know if this is louder or um, quieter than normal ones. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and let this heat up and I'll check on it in a bit. All right, guys, so we're a little over three hours in. As you can see, it dropped the humidity significantly. We're down to 18%. Uh, I actually got to leave, so I won't be here right when it hits to the four hour mark, but I wanted to show it at about three hours in. And then I'm going to let it sit overnight and we'll check the humidity, see kind of what it ends up being uh, when it's sitting overnight. I think it will stay pretty close to around the 15 to 20% mark, uh, maybe even drop a tad lower once it hits the four hour mark. Uh, but I think overnight, uh, because of the little holes at the top for the uh, circulation, it will let a little bit of humidity back in. Uh, so I think it'll probably balance out around the 20% give or take, uh, but I'll check that tomorrow. And I think that's important uh, if you're using this as a dry box as well as a dryer, because uh, you want to keep that humidity somewhat uh, stable. All right, guys, so we're here about a day later. Uh, the humidity did go up a little bit. Uh, to 36 and the temperature balanced out. That's just the ambient room temperature. Uh, but this is still well within uh, normal use cases for uh, filaments. If it did creep up a little bit higher, you could just run it for a short period of time to drop it back down. Uh, but PLA is good between typically 30 and 50%. Uh, so this would have taken out any bubbles or anything in the filament and then uh, really allowed you to get a much better print quality from filament that has been sitting out. I'm going to do a test next time around, um, probably for the next video, where I'm going to leave one of these spools of filament outside for a couple days, uh, do a test print with it, and then put it in here for the four hours like it recommends, and then test with that to see if it actually makes any difference or not. 
um, but this is working as advertised. It's do, it did a good job, brought the humidity down, uh, kind of dried everything out. So it's working as both a filament dryer and a dry box. Um, you could also throw some silica gel in there if you just wanted to use it more as the dry box instead of a dryer. Um, so that would help just pull some of the humidity out and seal the top here. Just put something over these holes um, because those are used for circulating the air out and getting the humidity out. That said, if you do go that route, uh, make sure that you take whatever you use to seal this off uh, before you actually try to run the heater side of it again because uh, it's not going to work properly and it's not going to get that moisture out of the box. All right, guys, so that covered the unboxing, the setup, and uh, kind of walking through what you need to do to actually uh, make it work. Uh, like I said, it's very straightforward. It only has four buttons, very usable interface. It's pretty quiet overall. So if you're in the market for a dryer box, um, this is definitely a good one. Honestly, it beat my expectations. I've had some pretty cheap stuff sent over from some of the uh, China companies, uh, more like knockoffs or lower end, um, but this one is built well, and I was actually pretty pleased with it. Uh, so I, I think it's definitely up there among some of the better ones. Uh, I'm, like I said in the video, I'm gonna do that test with uh, the filament, kind of testing out what it actually does, how big of a difference it makes when you dry it out uh, versus just um, letting it sit outside and using it after that. Also, I did wanna apologize if you heard any construction noise in the background. Uh, they're framing a house across the street, so it is a little bit loud. Um, I did take some of you guys' feedback and change my mic around. I got one of these little mics that clip onto me uh, versus just using the shotgun mic that's attached to the camera. And uh, uh, hopefully it makes a difference. So the one thing I didn't really talk about um, so far in this video was the price of this. I think um, at the time of this video, it's about 130 bucks if you get it online. Uh, so it's not the cheapest dryer box out there, uh, but it's definitely not the most expensive. It's probably right around the midpoint. So it's pretty good value for what you're actually getting. And you can do multiple spools with it, or like I said, the one larger one, if you use the three kilogram spools, uh, which I typically don't. Um, I did make a note in the video that if you are gonna use different filament types in here, I would recommend going with the one that requires the lower temperature um, as the settings for the dryer. Uh, even if that means you have to run it a little bit longer, I wouldn't wanna risk potentially damaging the other filament. Um, or you can just use only one type at a time. But if you're running multiple printers out of this and actually using it as a dry box after it's um, dried out the filament, uh, then you might wanna have different types of filaments in there. If you guys have any questions about anything I covered here or would like to see any other videos, uh, go ahead and leave a comment below or join us on Discord. Thanks.